Hello. Hey guys, it's Heather Rodriguez, and we're going to be talking about bioestrogenic herbs and whether or not they're beneficial for estrogen dominance. So the last couple of days, I've been talking about um, xenohormones, xenoestrogens, and different chemicals in our lives that affect our hormonal health. Now, um, I'm going to be talking about a couple of different things that we tend to use as actual solutions. And a lot of people will reach out when I talk about some of these herbs as solutions and say, hey, that's a phytoestrogenic herb, or that's an herb that has an estrogenic effect, why would you use that? So there's a couple different things to understand. So let's go ahead and jump right in. If you have any questions um, during the class, just go ahead and put them in the comments. Just say hello, and then I can answer them at the end. So what are phytoestrogenic herbs? These are herbs that are going to have an effect, an estrogenic effect on the body. There's a couple different ways that they can do this. The first is either having a direct effect on the receptor site, or they're having an effect on the full endocrine system when you're looking at the tonic. So what we're mainly going to be talking about is these phytoestrogenic herbs. So something to consider is that there's different strengths of um, estrogen receptor sites being stimulated in the body. When we talk about the chemicals found in household cleaners, skin care, plastics, all these things in our environment, their action in the receptor site is very stimulating and extremely strong, and they can actually stimulate the growth of new estrogen receptor sites, and then they go onto those receptor sites and stimulate those. They can also inhibit the liver from being able to metabolize these excess estrogens that are being produced. So there's this whole cycle that can happen with these extremely strong um, endocrine disruptors and these xenoestrogens, correct? Okay. So then there's our own personal estrogen that our body's producing, that our body needs, and the action on those receptor sites is kind of a medium, you know, compared to all these things that I'm missing. It's kind of a medium effect, normal effect that we should be having. Now, when phytoestrogen herbs come into play, they have a stimulating effect of 1 100 to 1 1,000 of a stimulating effect compared to our even our own normal estrogen. So they're very weak in their effect. But where they become beneficial, they still take up that space in that receptor site so these xenoestrogens are not able to come in and to have that effect on that site. So they are actually very protective. Some of them can be a little bit stronger and do have an estrogen stimulating effect. So those would be beneficial when someone might be wanting to increase the thickness of the uterine lining, when they go into menopause, someone who has low estrogen, they can all be beneficial in this way. But they're also protective. So when you hear phytoestrogens, know that they're not all the same. It's kind of like antioxidants. They're not all the same. They don't all have the exact same action. Um, some are more beneficial than others, but know that because, just because they have the word estrogen in them does not mean that they're bad. Even, I mean, estrogen's not bad. It's very needed in our body. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about what the herbs are and the different types of um, phytoestrogenic herbs and hormones. So one of them is going to be rural jelly. Rural jelly is um, a wonderful, what I consider to be superfood, it's extremely nutrient dense, and this one has a um, phytoestrogenic effect. Um, Effect on the receptor sites. Um, another one is, excuse me, is going to be red clover. This is a very popular one. Um, you'll find this in a lot of formulas for menopause, but this does have a direct strong phytoestrogenic um, response to the receptor sites. So this is something that you wouldn't necessarily use long term, um, but you might, if you have like a thin uterine lining, you might use it the first part of the cycle. Um, it's a little bit stronger than most of these groups that we'll be talking about. Uh, Don Kwai, licorice root, hops, those are all a flax seed. Those all have direct effects on the receptor sites and they're very, they have a mild effect. Um, hops as in beer, something to think about. <laughs> um, so American ginseng, this one's really unique because this could be perfect for men. This has a direct phytoestrogenic effect on the receptor site, but it also has a mild testosterone mimicking effect. So this is gonna benefit them. So it's something that I personally love to have Male formulas. Um, wild yam. Now, this is a unique one because this has um, this is a hormone balancer as well as a mimicker. It has precursors to the materials needed to produce progesterone in the body. The only reason that I don't, you know, I'm not really big into wild yam creams is because you don't know how much progesterone is going to be produced. That's why I prefer straight progesterone creams. So you know, I'm getting 40 milligrams a day or whatever it is um, that's your application. Um, you know, because well the end, it's like, how wild is your body? Um, uh, Romania, so now we're going to go kind of into the tonics. So these are going to have more of an endocrine tonic effect, and they'll be beneficial, but they're not as strong um, 
it's phytoestrogen. So we've got Vitex. Vitex is absolutely wonderful. It helps regulate pituitary activity. Um, it's involved with the hormonal feedback loop and helping like that to work properly. Um, studies have shown it helps to increase production of progesterone and the hormone, help you, uh, help the luteal phase, all kinds of things um, this group does. But it doesn't have an effect on the endocrine receptor sites in the same way as these phytoestrogens. Um, another one's going to be Romania. This is a wonderful overall endocrine tonic, um, as is OT and Tribulus. Um, Tribulus is beneficial. Another one that's beneficial for both men and women. This is another form, uh, earthly pattern meal formula that's going to help with that overall hormonal supportive effect. So now I want to talk quickly about soy and you know kind of where soy comes into this. So soy is a direct phytoestrogen. It's actually the strongest of all of them. And so what? Not all soy is bad. If you're eating like miso or you're eating tempeh or something like like beans, you know, like normal, um, there's going to be benefits from that. But once we start getting into supplementing with it or eating really processed soy foods like soy hot dogs and soy meats and all these different things, it's going to be very strong. Um, it's going to be high amounts of soy. So that may be, you know, not beneficial for some. I know some women in menopause that that benefits from it, but their estrogen is extremely low. So that's one that I don't tend to use or go towards. Um, because of there's been so many mixed studies with the effects of soy um, when it comes to estrogen and all of like that. Um, by any means, you know, eating some tempeh or some tofu, or, you know, that's not that's not what I'm talking about. So that's kind of the gist of phytoestrogen and how they're going to have their effect and actually beneficial when you're experiencing estrogen dominance. So the way that you would add this to a fertility program is it's something that you would use very gently. It's not like something you would be like, okay, I'm now going to be taking like my clover every single day. Um, just keep in mind some of these herbs that you're already taking will have some of these actions in them. You know, if you're taking gum fly, you're using bites of gum, not like this, but if you're using gum fly or royal jelly, um, some of these things are going to have those effects. Licorice roots and a lot of our formulas, gum fly, they're all going to have these gentle protective effects. So don't be afraid of phytoestrogen herbs. They're there to protect you. There's also um, essential oils that are great phytoestrogens. And I love to use them for this because they're very easy to add in without having to add another capsule. Um, and they can just be rolled on the skin and they will be directly absorbed into the system. A couple examples of those oils would be sage, fennel, um, fairy sage is another great one. Fairy sage though is an herb that I, or an essential oil I wouldn't use after ovulation because it can, be, it can stimulate even contractions so if you think pregnant. You don't want to be using fairy sage um, in concentrating that stuff. So, but if you want to learn more about, I have a couple different resources for you guys. If you want to learn more about phytoestrogenic herbs, um, here is a whole article that I'll post up there. And then if you want to learn more about what you can do about estrogen dominance, I have my new estrogen checklist. Go to estrogenchecklist.com, and that's going to have. Um, information and helping you to understand more kind of what are the signs of estrogen dominance and what you can do about it. Um, you know, we first want to help protect the body from the things coming in from the outside that are hot, that are mimicking these hormones very strongly in the body, and then we want to help the body get rid of and help to metabolize this estrogen. So that whole guide goes through the steps in the right order, do them in the right order. You don't want to start helping your body get rid of it, but you're not doing anything about it coming in, right? Um, so estrogen checklist is where you can check that out. And also, yeah, so those are the two, two places. If you want to learn more about essential oils for hormonal health, um, I just completed a new guide as well that I'm going to link down here. And this is specifically for fertility and hormonal health, um, very specific to that. So you can check that out as well. And those are all free. Okay, so some quick questions. If you have estrogen dominance, what herbs and seeds are used to balance it? So go ahead and check out that guide, estrogen checklist, and that will help you uh, get started with learning more about kind of what steps to take. Me from New York, um, Diana has been in New Jersey's. My lining would be on the trip side if I think you any estrogen dominance. Right? So sometimes, it's not always, it's not like if A, B, and C are happening, you have estrogen dominance. There's a whole list of different types of things that could be happening. Just the fact that you're experiencing endometriosis is a sign of estrogen dominance. So estrogen causes things to grow in the body. So when there's things growing in the body, such as endometriosis, uh, uterine fibroids, cysts, things that are being stimulated, um, that is 
from um, symmetric estrogen. That's part of it. There's a bigger picture to all of that. So that alone would make me think um, of doing some of these things to help support the body. Now, any of these things that are kind of on this list, the suggestions are all just beneficial overall. They're not dramatic um, steps that are going to cause your hormones to get out of whack or anything like that. They're just extremely supportive of overall hormone balance. Um, is it true that vitamins have lots of side effects? What side effects are you speaking of? Um, I have a whole video on what to expect once you start taking Vitex or when you're using herbs that have an effect on the hormonal system. Things can start to shift. You can possibly get you know, like have some breasts or have some spotting. Um, your cycle length can change, but that's pretty normal for herbs that are having an effect on the hormonal system because it's, in, it's a very intricate, um, it's a whole intricate like orchestra system. So if one change happens here, you're going to have some things that, that can shift over here until things normalize out. So I have a whole video on YouTube where you can um, I go into great detail about that and what to expect. Marmalot, you pick for fertility constellation. You want to contact us. Um, there must be a link lost somewhere. Go ahead and send us an email to help at naturalfertilityshop.com and we will uh, get that squared up right away. Um, that's my thing that you pay. We ship internationally at naturalfertilityshop.com. Diana, I'll check that out. I have issues with my mind getting thick enough as well. You can reach out to us. We have a whole guide um, and, and article about how to help support growing healthy kids. So, all right. Well, thank you guys for joining me today. I hope you found this topic helpful, and I'll talk to you again soon.